Kumusta, Okilong. Hi guys, today is construction day 52. Construction day 52. So we're going to do something a little different today. Uh, today's thumbnail talks about uh, the nightmare uh, that we encountered when we moved from uh, Leyte to Dumaguete. Uh, so Wilma's been asking me to uh, do a video on that, telling that story uh, for a long time. So we're going to go ahead and do that today. Uh, so I'll go up to the work site, do a walk and talk, and uh, tell that story. And uh, also, they did not uh, pour the uh, main beam today. Uh, they weren't ready. At, late in the day yesterday, they came to me and said, uh, you know, is it okay, sir, if we move it to Thursday? And I said, yeah, that's, that's not a problem. So uh, they're just wrapping up the final, uh, boxing up the beams uh, today. And then they're going to start first thing tomorrow morning with that main beam pouring. So uh, I definitely want to get some videos of that. So uh, see you guys up at the uh, work site. So we'll start today's video here uh, at the, uh, the back of the property on the uh, east side. So uh, to tell the story about our move, um, when we uh, came here to Negros Oriental for the second time, we found this property. Um, and I think we were here for two weeks. And uh, we wanted to get the deed of sale um, and get through the attorneys uh, before uh, we went back to Leyte. So, uh, you know, most of you guys know that uh, when we retired back in July of 2021, we moved to Leyte. Uh, Wilma has a house there, and uh, that's where we moved. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we searched uh, those five islands and uh, found the property here in uh, Negros that uh, we purchased. So uh, once we got the deed of sale, um, we moved back uh, to uh, Leyte. Um, and I believe that was around May 1st. So uh, we were chomping at the bit. We uh, had the uh, architect uh, working on the plans. Uh, we were gonna do some Zoom meetings uh, with the architect to do the, the finalization on the changes to get the blueprint. I already found the contractor, so things was in motion. Uh, so uh, we, we set a date uh, six weeks out uh, to come back uh, and to move here full time. So uh, we met with uh, real estate agent Alma. She found us a uh, townhome. We uh, signed that contract. Uh, so we were committed. So uh, we said that we would uh, be back uh, June 15th was, uh, was the goal. So that was six weeks. So when we got back to uh, Leyte, uh, one of the first things that Wilma did was uh, she went on Facebook uh, Marketplace and started looking for moving companies because we had a, you know, a lot of our uh, furniture and belongings that we wanted to bring here to the uh, town home. And then when we finished building this home, we would just simply move the stuff, you know, just a few kilometers instead of, uh, you know, two different islands. So we wanted to do it all at one time because uh, we knew we were going to be busy here, um, you know, keeping an eye on uh, this build. So uh, basically what Wilma did was she... Uh, interviewed six moving companies um and that's we would have interviewed more but that's all we basically found on uh facebook marketplace so we reached out or wilma did uh either through email or phone and had conversations and uh come to find out four of the six moving companies uh did not do business uh in Leyte. uh so they you know they went back and forth basically between cebu and manila it makes sense. That's where the population is. Um, so we had it down to two moving companies that was interested. So we're going back and forth, getting prices. And they were about the same, about the same price. But uh, one uh, wasn't getting back to us with our questions, and uh, the other one was. So uh, one of the first things that we said was, you know, make sure you have a big enough truck. And what we did was we took pictures of uh, all our belongings. Uh, I think we had 35 ballot buying boxes, you know, refrigerator, we had uh, furniture or beds, wardrobes, you know, just typical household items. So, uh, you know, we took pictures of everything, sent it to both companies and said, you know, make sure that you guys uh, bring a big enough truck. And I actually told Wilma to, uh, to tell them that uh, I did not think a 16 foot truck would work. I think it would have to be the next size up. Uh, like 20 or 24 foot. That was my recommendation, and we'll pass that along. But uh, one company really wasn't communicating with us. Uh, and, uh, you know, we were running out of time. You know, we wanted to, to move in six weeks. So, uh, you know, the one that was uh, communicating with us better, we chose. And, uh, 
you know, we were set. So they, uh, they contacted us, um, I think it was about four weeks out and, uh, said, uh, we're good to go. Uh, could we move the date up from June 15th to June 10th? Because they were happening uh, to be in Leyte um, with a truck, making a delivery on the 10th, about a couple hours from the house. So we said, no, that's fine. Uh, you know, consider that a backhaul uh, for that trucking company. You know, they were going to make a delivery there in Leyte, and then they were going to head back to Cebu. Um, so uh, it made sense. So we said, sure, we'll move it up. So, uh, you know, we're all ready to go. And, uh, you know, that was four weeks out. So I told Wilma, uh, every week for the next four weeks, reach out to the company and, uh, you know, just touch base with the dispatcher and just remind them, uh, remind them uh, the truck size we need. And I remind, uh, you know, basically everything that, that we asked for. So she did that and, uh, you know, em emphasized on uh, truck size. So you guys kind of see where I'm going. So, uh, you know, we're a week out, we're ready to go, we're all packed, you know, we broke things down, uh, you know, all the beds were broken down, we're sleeping on the floor, you know, well, we're really uh, ready to go. So, uh, the day before, they uh, called us, said, uh, you know, we're on target, um, we'll be there on the 10th, um, and we'll be there at 8 a.m. So, we said, fantastic. So we get up, you know, like five in the morning, ready to go, start uh, the final prep, you know, cleaning the house a little bit. And they called us and said, uh, sir, we have a delay. Uh, we will not get to your site until 5 p.m. So, uh, you know, that was better than missing, you know, the entire day or pushing it two or three days. Uh, you know, we already had the Wi-Fi shut off and, you know, we wanted to, to move. We were ready to go. So uh, they said, no, it's just going to be a delay of a day, got held up, and they, uh, they're they not going to be there at 5 o'clock. So 5 o'clock rolled around, uh, no truck. Um, they did call us and said, uh, we promise we'll be there at 6. So uh, that's 6 p.m., so another hour delay. So again, not the end of the world, you know, but we were up all day. You know, We uh, packed the truck. And I'm actually going to show you guys a video of uh, what the truck looked like. Uh, you know, we had our, uh, I'll call it valuables, um, dishes and Wilma's crystal and, you know, just some uh, personal belongings in the truck in the back seat as well as the, the back of the truck itself. We had it all tarped up and uh, we were ready to go. So uh, I guess about 6.30 rolled around. Now it's getting dark, Philippines, it gets dark like 6.30. And here comes the truck. Um, guess what? It was a 16 foot box. So as soon as I saw it, I said to myself, there's no way uh, everything's gonna fit. And uh, you know, the truck pulled in, the guys jumped out. Uh, I said, guys, I don't think this is gonna work. I don't think that, you know, everything's gonna fit. Oh no, no, we looked at the pictures, everything's gonna be fine. So, uh, you know, keep in mind, I have an NMAX, you know, we had lawn furniture on the outside. I mean, we had, we had a lot of stuff. So, uh, you know, they got started right away. It was probably about a quarter to seven. They started loading. And, uh, you know, a couple hours into it, um, you know, truck was filling up. They finally wanted to get the scooter in. We put the scooter in. It took up a lot of space. Um, they said, sir, we don't think everything's going to fit. I said, well, I've been saying that for weeks to your uh, dispatcher. Uh, you know, you need to give them a call, get another truck out here. And that just doesn't work here in the Philippines. So, uh, we had to make, uh, some quick, uh, executive decisions. So, uh, I told them, pull the scooter off. Uh, that would give a lot of extra room and, uh, just move forward. So what that basically meant, and the plan was obviously to put everything in the truck and then, uh, I drive our own pickup truck to strata wilma would be a passenger and uh you know we just follow the moving truck uh, all the way from Leyte to dumaguete so that was the plan right you're inside if it's raining it's not a problem you got air conditioning you got uh spotify music you know all's good uh so now we went from that to uh greg's got to drive the scooter uh you know a long way 
Uh, so now it's uh, about 11 p.m., 11.30 p.m. Uh, they came back and told us, uh, sir, uh, the ship, uh, that it was about 20 minutes away, um, we did not book in time, so we don't have a spot on the ship. So they said, uh, the good news is uh, the dispatcher went ahead and booked us at another port, but that port is an hour and a half away. Uh, so I'm like, it, it can't get any better than this. So now we're, you know, we're knocking on midnight and uh, the ship uh, takes off, I think it was about 3 a.m. So we have three hours, but it's an hour and a half drive. So uh, guys, it gets better. So uh, I know where the port is. So uh, I said, you know, you guys are gonna go, uh, there's two ways of going, you're gonna go this way. They said, no, no, we're, we know a, a different way. And I should have stopped them there, but I didn't. Uh, I was up from, uh, like I said, like five, 6 a.m. It's now midnight. And, uh, you know, I'm driving this scooter at midnight, you know, an hour and a half to the port. And then Wilma has to drive the truck, which she wasn't uh, very happy with as well, especially, uh, you know, the story that I'm about to tell you in Cebu. But, uh, but anyway, we took off and they went away that uh, actually a third way. I've never seen, we went through this jungle and the roads were getting worse and worse. And about 30 minutes in, I stopped the truck. I, I passed them and said, where are you guys going? And they said, you know, sir, we're lost. So I said, you know, <laughs> we're half hour, hour into this trip. Um, I think it was about 45 minutes. Um, I said, we're going to have to turn around because I don't know where we're going. And they said, well, we don't either. Uh, and they apologized, but, you know, that only meant so much. So uh, we turned around, went 45 minutes back to where we lived, and then we still had another hour and a half to go. So, you know, here we are. It's like 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, been up since uh, 5, 6 a.m., so knocking on 24 hours, and uh, here I am driving uh, to the port. So we get to the port just in time. Um, you know, the good news, we did get on the ship. Uh, didn't have a lot of time to spare. And it was a three-hour uh, ship ride to the island of Cebu. So we went from Leyte to Cebu. So uh, we got to Cebu. Uh, now, I didn't know where, obviously, we were going to land. I thought we were going to land right at Cebu City. Uh, but we were at the northern tip of Cebu. <laughs> uh, and we got there at about 6.30 a.m. Uh, so... It took us three and a half hours just to get to Cebu City. So uh, it, was a, it was a long trip. So I, I, told, I told the guys, uh, we drove that three and a half hours. We fueled up once we got to Cebu, but uh, we drove that three and a half hours. So now it's uh, like 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning. It's starting to get hot. I said, when you get to Cebu, you know, you got to pull over and, uh, you know, we got to take a rest. Um, you know, I've been up, I could not sleep on the ship at all. It was very noisy, you know, so I'm well past 24 hours up, you know, driving this, uh, scooter three and a half hours from the very top of Cebu to Cebu city. And guess what happened when we got to Cebu city? Started to rain. Uh, so soaking wet and, uh, we got to Cebu city, which was, uh, Wilma's fear. And guess what happened? Uh, we got separated. So Wilma got stuck at a red light. Um, I got through the red light, truck got through the red light. Uh, so I had to chase down the truck who did not know that Wilma wasn't behind. So, uh, you know, he took a, I think a right and a left and, uh, Wilma got stuck at that red light. So, uh, we got lost. So I pulled the truck over at the pass him. He didn't know that the, uh, that Wilma was, uh, stuck at that red light. And, uh, when I finally got him pulled over, you know, I have no idea where we're at, you know, so called Wilma. You know, she's lost. She's frustrated. It took us 30 minutes to find her uh, in the pouring rain. So uh, at that point, uh, you know, I was pretty much done with the move. Um, but uh, I told the guys, uh, now, if you know how far Cebu is from the port going to Dumaguete, it's a six-hour drive by scooter. So, uh, you know, add it all together. That's uh, nine and a half hours if you go straight through. But, uh, you know, we lost Wilma for 30 minutes uh, and uh, <laughs> we stopped a few times. So I told the guys as I was getting more and more tired, 
every hour and a half, you got to pull over for 10 minutes. Just, just do me that favor. Just every hour and a half, you guys have your cell phones. I don't want to flash my lights at you. Just look at the, your watch and pull over uh, every 90 minutes. Just give me 10 minutes just to jump off the scooter um, and uh, just walk around for five minutes. So they did that. Uh, and I told Wilma, you know, we're on the, uh, the highway down from uh, Cebu City to Dumaguete uh, to the port down there where you jump over to Dumaguete. Um, I think they call it Oslob. Uh, the road's not very good. There's not a lot of place to pull over. So I told her, don't get out of the truck. Uh, stay in the truck, you know, for that five, ten minutes. Um, and then we'll just, uh, you know, just keep going. I didn't want her to, to be involved with any uh, traffic. So uh, what was happening is every hour and a half, I'd jump out of, off the scooter and the guys would come out, uh, you know, to ask how I was. And uh, I was noticing they were looking at me laughing. Um, and that happened uh, over a couple spots and Wilma's, uh, Wilma's starting to laugh here. Uh, they were laughing at me and I was like, one of these guys, every time we stop, uh, they get out and they're looking at me and they laugh. And I didn't put two and two together. So uh, about the fourth time we stopped, and now we're getting closer, a few hours away uh, from the port, uh, there was a, a pretty large area to pull over. And uh, so we pulled over, and Wilma got out of the truck, and there was a place there we could get snacks and, you know, use the restroom. And uh, Wilma uh, got out, and uh, when she saw me, her eyes got really big. And I'll let her uh, tell the rest of that oh story. God. I'm sorry to laugh about it, but uh, guys... I wish I take a video of it. I feel so bad, but at the same time, I can't help to laugh <laughs> because he was covered with soup, mm. and all you could say is his eyeball, <laughs> <laughs> his uh, hands, his legs was all black, and he asked me why the driver look at me and laugh. And I said, if you could just say yourself right now, you're covered with soup. And it's like, it's all black. I mean, I feel so bad because <laughs> I should not laugh about it. But uh, I feel bad because, you know, here I am driving the truck with air conditioning. And he's driving the scooter for many hours. Yeah, but anyway, that's the story, guys. It was a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I was uh, covered with, uh, I guess, diesel uh, soot. Because uh, there's a lot of trucks up and down that highway going from uh, Cebu City to uh, down to the port. So uh, I was completely covered. So uh, when we finally did get to the port, I said to Wilma, do you mind if I just strip down to my boxers and, uh, and just try to hose off a little bit? Because there was a hose there. She said no problem. So I didn't care who was watching. Uh, I just stripped down to my uh, boxers and rinsed off. Uh, to get that uh, soot off me. So the clothes I had was ruined. I had a white long sleeve shirt on and uh, that was black and uh, we tried washing it didn't come out so we just threw it away. But uh, yeah that was that was the story. Uh, so we got on the uh, ship uh, to go over from Oslob over to the Dumaguete area and that was another hour and then it was about 45 minutes to the condo. And then when we got to the condo, uh, the townhome, uh, we had to unload the truck. So uh, I think all said and done, it was about 19 and a half hours of uh, travel, but we were up uh, and we did the math from the point that we got up that five, six in the morning till we went to sleep that night. Um, it was, I think it was 42 hours uh, in total uh, that we didn't sleep. So we were just absolutely exhausted, um, but we made it and uh, that's the story. And, uh, you know, Wilma wanted me to tell this story for a long time. But it was definitely a challenge with the rain, and then that day it was so hot, and driving the scooter basically from Leyte all the way to the top of Cebu, all the way to the bottom of Cebu, uh, and then, you know, getting across uh, to Negros Oriental, then that 45-minute ride uh, to, uh, to our town home. So it was, it was definitely a challenge, uh, but we're glad we did it. We're here now, and uh, talk to you guys later.